I'm John, I'm an alcoholic. I've been in the program now for six years. Sober for three. This is scary. It's new. I never saw a body like that. There's gonna be a lot of late nights and overtime because of the brutal murder that happened in town. And I didn't want to set up expectations that I can't keep. Our expectations of you are very low. Spans the bites are gigantic. Same as the distance of the paw prints. <laughs> Thunder Road had such an interesting theatrical push, and obviously with COVID, things have to be done a little bit differently. Um, what about your strategy has changed from that film to this film as far as promotions and working with uh, theatrical and online? Yeah, so uh, it's very weird to release a film during a pandemic. Um, we had a big premiere at a drive-in, like 150 cars that came. We did a double feature of Wolf of Snow Hollow and The Burbs, one of my favorite movies of all time. They let us like pick what movie we wanted to screen with us. Um, and so it was weird to not like hug the members of cast and crew who came out and drove out with their families to see the movie. Um, but that's the world that we live in right now. Um, with Thunder Road, it was very different because I was self-distributing it. This one is with Orion Classics. And so I have this incredible infrastructure of a team that is like so cool and so down to help and make the thing incredible um, that I feel like I'm just getting in the way of a lot of this stuff. I feel like I'm, you know, like putting a wrench into the works by screwing things up. And, um, and I just want to make sure that they have everything that they need. Um, so it's very different. Like uh, in with Thunder Road, it was like us driving around in a van trying to sell DVDs DVDs or whatever by comparison. And now it's like coming out in theaters and digitally around the world tomorrow. Tomorrow. Crazy. It's exciting. It must feel so different to have a distributor behind you versus doing a grassroots campaign. I used to work for a distributor that Tug that did the grassroots kind of like theatrical yeah. on demand thing. So it's it must feel like a huge change. <laughs> Yeah, have yeah, it, your yeah, yeah, it is. I, I, I talked to Tug, um, uh, my buddy Alex DeBrenko used to work for them. And then Nick Gonda, I knew because he spoke at South by Southwest and I was like such a fan of his, of his speech. I, I thought for a long time that that was going to be the future of independent film. Like you could partner with theaters and, and do all that. It still is. I mean, it's still like a, a very possible thing. We're very lucky. All the Alamo draft houses have like totally endorsed our work and, and carried us. Um, yeah, it is a it is a very strange thing to do. Um, but really, when we first started out, we made so many friends just from having this like indie film that we wanted to get out and people cared about it a lot. And so now doing it the second time, it's it's much less daunting climbing the mountain again. Yeah, I bet. Um, so what made you jump into horror for your second feature? I had the idea for the ending and I was like, that is just so cool. <laughs> like, I feel that it sounds so stupid, but like, the, the ending of the movie, I had I had the idea for it. And I was like, oh my God, that would be such a crazy, terrifying, like Hitchcock, David Fincher style, like cool, cool movie. And then I started writing it. I was already doing research for Thunder Road. So I kind of knew how these like police departments, sheriff's departments worked. Um, and I, I pitched it and then got greenlit to write it. And so I like got a little bit of financing to kind of write the script, which I was stoked about. It was the first time I ever got paid to write anything. And, uh, and so I started writing it and then I was like, oh, this could be really neat. It could be this like story about life and love and legacy and not just about a werewolf. You know, it's not just a werewolf movie. And every step of the way, everybody encouraged me to continue to make it that instead of just a monster movie, which was great. Yeah, I actually want to talk to you about that because I really liked how you paralleled addiction with being a monster and kind of like, I always love when horror movies kind of play with that, like, what's the real monster? Is it this yeah. thing that is killing everyone or is it this sure. thing in yourself? Um, so if we wanted to explore that a little bit and talk about that a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so I love movies like that. Like The Exorcist, if you watch it nowadays, you know, Ellen Bernstein's performance is so sad and terrifying because she just loves her daughter so much and wants her daughter to be okay. And it feels like it could be a movie about drug addiction or mental illness. And then it just also happens to have this crazy demonic possession thing. So like the wedge for the audience in is the naturalism of a serious conflict that's happening. Um, and then, and you know, same thing with Rosemary's Baby. Rosemary's Baby is ostensibly about postpartum and prepartum depression and how you can lose your mind. And that's kind of like woven into the spooky cult stuff. Um, so yeah, I really wanted to make something that was kind of a Trojan horse in that sense of making something that I thought could be very poignant for people and topical while also making a genre picture. 
Yeah. Um, you also, in your press notes, you mentioned Zodiac and you've already mentioned David Fincher. Uh, how <laughs> much does that movie, do you want to talk a little bit of how that plays into like yeah. one of your main inspirations? Oh my God. Uncle Dave is like my favorite filmmaker of all time. It's so bad. We call him out on set. He's not my uncle. He's my sensei. Um, but he is just so talented, obviously. And like we were doing this stuff and we wanted to make it is like interesting and as austere as Zodiac, but then also having like having the, you know, the detective pornography, like investigation stuff that he does so well, but then also having it be these dumb characters who are doing it. And like, I just, it was making me laugh and really intriguing me at the same time. And um, all of his films do that too. I mean, it, if you watch seven correctly, like Brad Pitt is so funny in that film. Like, um, there's so many like zingers from him where he's just an idiot and it's so compelling to watch. Um, I wanted to do that. I wanted to do something that was like kind of a, a low brow, you know, like a, a smaller budget version of a David Fincher movie and they let me do it, which is just crazy. Yeah, I actually think that's really interesting because I feel like your film, much like Fincher's films, like his are horror adjacent, I would say, not necessarily. Like Seven is pretty much an outright horror movie, but like Zodiac, it's like on that thin line. And I feel like you really blend genre well, where you have comedy, thriller, and oh, horror all kind of at once. Uh, is that something you enjoy doing? Yeah, so yes. And then immediately after making this one, we made another horror, thriller, or comedy um, that we shot in November and December called The Beta Test. Um, and I really do love that space. I mean, looking at, at like Parasite, Parasite does a lot of genre blending as well. It's like about a serious issue about wealth inequality, um, but then it's also this like crazy guy who lives in a basement, <laughs> eats a banana really gross. Like all of this stuff that's very funny while also being poignant and terrifying at the same time. I think that there's a, an audience for that stuff. I think people, I always say, if you don't make jokes throughout your movies, your audiences will. Like you, you can make a story that is this wonderful detective investigation, but if you're not coming up with funnier jokes than the audience can, you're going to lose to the audience. Like, there are funny people that watch movies, and if they make fun of it, you know, you're done for. So as a writer, director, uh, you also are a producer and you act. Uh, is this something you always want to do, is like be in the forefront of all the films that you make? Are you, do you no, always want to write for yourself, am, essentially? No, of course not. I am a terrible actor. It oh. takes me so long to do anything because I have no formal education in acting at all. And so, like, I am forced to rehearse it a thousand times more than any other actor does. And it's very time consuming. Like, I think one of the difficult things of being an independent filmmaker is that it doesn't necessarily get into the broad the spectrum of viewership. So not many famous people have ever seen the movies. There's a couple champions of ours that have watched all of our movies since the beginning who are famous. But um, no, I mean, Jake Gyllenhaal or like Shia LaBeouf or any of these people, Sam Rockwell, who are doing what I'm trying to do better than me, that would be a fucking dream to work with. I'm like... Yeah, it, it, maybe maybe after this movie, we'll be able to call those people and, and they'll take us seriously, but who knows? So ideally, you would like to direct one of those actors potentially in one of your films? That way I wouldn't have to just humiliate myself by pretending to be an actor. Yeah, sure. You're not, you're not, you're not a bad actor, so don't worry about that. <laughs> um, so, but something that did interest me about both films that you did is that you've played cop characters, which is, I think, kind of fascinating yeah. that you've played it twice in a row. Is there some, like thing that's pulled you towards that archetype that made you want to explore it a little bit? I just think it's really funny to humiliate these guys who take themselves so seriously, or rather who like feel the need to be taken seriously so much. And like they work in a profession, men and women, where they have to keep a very, you know, sense of austerity about them. And to, to have idiots play these people is just so funny and an interesting confession of like, you know, although they should be focused on justice. And in many cases, John, my character, and Jim from Thunder Road are, you know, they are interested in justice. Um, they are also so self-centered and they come across as type A, like lunatics. And I find that just to be very complicated and fun to perform and fun to watch. Um, and, then, and then the other practical aspect of it is like, the nature of getting movies made in Hollywood, it's very difficult. Like it, I, if I had wanted to do a paparazzi movie, I have this like paparazzi script, it would have been impossible. It was impossible for me to do it, but to make another police movie, like uh, the way I picture, I was like, it's gonna be like Thunder Road, but it has a werewolf in it. And like instantly that's like, all right, cool. Yeah, go, go make that movie. 
Oh, interesting. Um, are there any cop performances in the over cinema that you pull from or like that really inspire you? Let me think. It's terrible. I wish I knew more. I mean, like, I wish I knew more police movies. Now I can't think of really any. Um, or like End television. of Watch. Joan Hall's good in End of Watch. Um, I mean, yeah, like looking at Fargo, like Fargo is such a fun detective story. Like, um, uh, you know, Officer Gunderson is just like such a hilarious character. And that was a huge inspiration to like watch somebody who is like salt of the earth and doesn't want to make a, a, you know, a perp feel uncomfortable or awkward in a scene. That kind of society blend of authority figure versus an idiot is like a huge inspiration for sure. Kind of circling back a little bit. I really, there's a part of your movie that I liked a lot where it's the chaotic style of editing that you use kind of when the main character is going on his downward spiral and there's also all these murders happening. Can you talk a little bit about the idea of kind of making the editing parallel the main character's feelings. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So, so for my first movie, it was like very long takes and much more theatrical of a movie. And with this one, I wanted to make it more conventionally edited because it was going to be my first studio movie. It was like, it has to be interesting for audiences. And then in watching Zodiac and watching Fight Club, both of those movies are basically like shot and edited in sequence form rather than scene form. It's not like we have this scene and then the next scene, it's like all of it is kind of blended beautifully together. Um, so it's like half music video, half narrative detective pornography. Um, and I just find that so interesting to watch and like undeniably compelling in the craftsmanship of, of filmmaking. And so because of that, I, I was like, oh, we could do this. We could do this on a small budget. It could be a very interesting kind of um, detective story by doing sequence editing rather than scene editing. Um, and then also like pairing the main character so you can see him getting drunk from a, you know, a flask at a funeral while at the crime scene for the woman who was murdered, it's like a weird, uh, in, you know, internal look at this guy's, you know, life and jumping from time. It's like, oh, maybe he's the werewolf. Like, you don't really know if he's jumping around. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was kind of like part of the DNA of the project and the story. And so that's why we edited it that way. I loved it. Um, and speaking of werewolves, what about specifically the werewolf mythology kind of gravitated you towards creating this kind of horror movie. Yeah, I I really loved the werewolf mythology over many other uh, like ghoul stories because the werewolf could be anybody. It's not like, you know, in Nosferatu, it's the guy at the top of the hill in the castle and everybody kind of knows he's weird. But a werewolf is somebody who changes their being once a month for reasons they have no control over. And then it could be your neighbor, it could be your wife, it could be anybody. And I find that to be so much more interesting and honest when it comes to violent crime in the United States and around the world. Um, like most people don't want to be caught. And if you are a werewolf, you probably do wake up ashamed. Um, and so that's why I picked that one. And then obviously using every part of the buffalo, we wanted to have the main character also exhibit similar traits by being an alcoholic and falling off the wagon of like, it must feel like that to be a werewolf of waking up, you know, after having done something stupid the night before. Oh, that makes sense. I actually, I like that a lot. Um, and it kind of, I guess, circling back to Zodiac being one of your inspirations, is that kind of why you chose women as the victims for this movie? It was a little, little bit like an homage to that or, cause it, it is a specific thing that you did choose women as the victims of the monster. Well, actually, in Zodiac, there are two male victims as well. So the, right. Lake, the Lake Berryessa murders, uh, her boyfriend is murdered. Obviously, um, Arthur Lee Allen, as a serial killer, was going out to control women. It was specifically women, and that's why he did. He also shot a um, male taxi driver. And then um, in, the, in the first crime scene, the Darla uh, shooting, the guy survived, um, but was also one of the victims. Um, so Zodiac, it was kind of male and female, although his victims in real life were almost exclusively female. Same thing with um, David Berkowitz. But no, um, I read John Douglas's book about serial murder, and it's almost exclusively uh, women. So if it, if it is a male serial killer, they usually never leave uh, the opposite sex unless they're um, homosexual, and they never leave their race, which is crazy to think about. Oh. So like, 
all of the research that we've done um, through Quantico and FBI and CIA about serial murder, um, just kind of spoiler alert, but like all of that is, it is almost exclusively a male on female crime. Um, mm -hmm. And so we tried to keep that as realistic as possible. I, I wish I could say like, I'm a pervert and like I'm Dario Argento, but like it's entirely based on the data in a strange way. That's interesting. Um, and I wasn't implying that at all, by the way. I was just curious about the thought process behind that, because you do have a scene in the film where they, they like, the, your character kind of talks about that a little bit, and you seem shocked that women are mostly the victims of these crimes, and I thought that was a little bit cheeky but funny. Um, well, also, he, I'm realizing now he also kills Gutierrez, so he kills a male police officer and puts him in a trash can, so it's not all female victims in the film. That is a spoiler, though, so we'll be cutting uh, oh, okay, that okay, cool. out. <laughs> oh, no, that one's fine. That one's okay. That one's okay. Um, and then, and then uh, yeah, and then to, 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 answer that, to answer that first part, um, yeah, no, I just, I, I find that to be really crazy that, like, uh, the, the, in the history of the werewolf mythology, people would find these women's bodies in the woods destroyed and they would say, oh, it couldn't be a neighbor. Like, I, I have to love my neighbor uh, as I love myself. Therefore, it has to be this monster that we create. And like the people, the neighbors have been getting away with this since the dawn of time, which is crazy to think about. Yeah, it's always someone you'd least expect, which I feel like is very true about your film as well. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was kind of like one of the biggest challenges for you in filming this? Shooting in the snow is, it sounds like it's a lot of fun because you're like with your best friends and like having snowball fights and stuff. It is actually not as fun as they chalk it up to be. It is very cold and it's very difficult to set up dolly track on ice. Uh, so you have to like salt everything down first and then worry that you're getting your cast and crew frostbite on their toes when you're asking them to go up to the top of a mountain and shoot in 14 degree weather for 15 hours at a time. Um, it, I, every single day, it, my producers said, why didn't we call this movie Werewolf Beach and shoot it in Maui, you know? Um, and I, you know, kicked myself the whole time, but it was worth it. It is such a strange look. It feels like... Uh, like Girl with a Dragon Tattoo or something. It has this like snow globe that all the characters live inside of. Um, yeah, I think, I think the weather was definitely the hardest part to, to deal with in making this film. You wanna be Sheriff? How about we start acting like one? Little Red Riding Hood Though everything 